Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. It's really amazing how they wake up every day and all they want to do is look for a way to get themselves into black space. See, it is not by force to support people. It is not by force to link yourself up to black people because they've been doing this a whole lot. They really do need black votes, but it is not by force. Like, you know, everywhere and anything they are doing, you see them say that uh, they have really done so much for black people than every other president all over the world. And the same person that is saying that he has done so much for black people is also out there planning some certain things for people that look like me. How do you say you like a community or you love a community, but indirectly you are out there pushing out some kind of evil. And now this Hispanic woman, you all remember videos that where Hispanics say that it is not in their blood to speak out. Why? Because it is not in their culture. They do not know how to speak out. Now this Hispanic woman is also part of the people supporting uh, Trump so bad. And I hope they remember how Ron DeSantis how he actually did them. And this person also has said that it is mass deportation for them. So these people, I really hope they are think, uh, thinking right. But then I am asking, why is it that they are comparing Donald Trump to Martin, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, who? Rosa Park or something. You know what? Let's get into this. So all of a sudden, Trump wants to build this new coalition of rocket raccoons to reach out to the black community and you know what bothers me the most about these weak ass chucking and jiving hubba bubba uncle remus steven from dango unchained bub dancing stepping and fetching rocket raccoon and kunisias is the gaslighting they do in service to swallowing the glizzy of donald trump like, we don't remember the things that Donald Trump said out of his own mouth or the things that people that work closely with him or he appointed to cabinet positions like former Secretary of Defense here, Mark Esper, and what he said that Donald Trump wanted to do to BLM protesters in D.C. following the death of George Floyd. And I was one of those protesters. Allow me to refresh your memory. I'm going to finally give a direct order to deploy uh, paratroopers into the streets of Washington, D.C., and I'm thinking with weapons and bayonets. And this would be horrible. What specifically was he suggesting that the U.S. military should do to these protesters? And he says, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the legs or something. And he's suggesting that that's what we should do, that we should bring in the troops and shoot the protesters. The commander-in-chief was suggesting that the U.S. military shoot protesters. Yes, in the streets American of our protesters. nation's capital. That's right. And understand why some of you well-meaning black folks are running around here capping for white folks talking about 2025. Our 2025 was in 1619 and has been going on ever since. And understand that was Donald Trump's idealism in June of 2020. Long before anybody got together and strung together, COINTELPRO, um, White Citizens Council manifestos, the Dixiecrats manifestos, the Klan manifesto, and every white conservative group that has ever existed in this country since it was founded, its manifestos. Why are y'all acting like this? But I digress. Y'all have the day you deserve. We're doing record numbers with the African-American voters. They are tired of what's happening to them. And honestly, there's been no president since Abraham Lincoln, and perhaps in a certain way, including Abraham Lincoln, but there's been no president since Abraham Lincoln that has done more for the black individual in this country than President Donald J. Trump. There's been nobody, not even close. Now, before we get into what was said, is it lost on anybody that he made those comments in front of the NRA? The same NRA 
that was notoriously quiet in the face of the death of registered gun owner Fernando Castile when he was shot by a police officer during a traffic stop. The same NRA that was notoriously quiet when licensed gun owner Atiana Jefferson, who was babysitting her nephew at the time, when a police officer fired a gun through her window, killing her. You need something more recent? What about registered gun owner and senior airman in the United States Air Force, Roger Fortson here, being shot within six seconds of opening his door to a police officer because he had a gun in his hand at his side in a state with the castle doctrine. The same NRA that is so pro-gun except when those guns are in the hands of black people because did you know the NRA supported gun control when the Black Panthers had weapons that they legally carried onto the capital of California, Sacramento to talk about policy. But I digress. Lincoln? The Lincoln who said, My paramount objective in this struggle, the Civil War, is to save the Union. It is not either to save or destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would do that also. And that was Lincoln's official position. That personal wish that all men everywhere could be free, that was not intended. And I know how some of you all like to cap and tussle um, over Abraham Lincoln. So I'm going to digress on that for just a moment so I won't have to commit digital violence on anybody. Now, this is a bold claim, and it should be easy for you all to back this bold claim up, right? So, I need you all to go back to the 2015-16 election cycle and show me any platforms and any policies that Donald Trump ran on that would support this claim, or also bring the policies that Donald Trump enacted during his presidency that somehow meet the criteria outlined in his claim. And before you get your feelings hurt without understanding facts, don't mention anything about historically black colleges or universities because Congress controls the purse strings of the government and that amount wasn't historic by any means. Don't get your feelings hurt with mentioning the Second Chance Act either. Now, we'll wait. Being black. The black experience is almost synonymous with suffering. We are the only people who are conditioned to take comfort in our suffering. We are the only people who are conditioned to take pride in our suffering. So much so that you will have people in our community who are 10, 15, 20 years removed from poverty, individually been living in financial prosperity since, still taking identity capital in the idea that they were raised in the gutter. In the black community, we don't just relish in our accomplishments. We relish in the idea that we suffered before we accomplished something. And that means more to us than, than the accomplishment itself. <laughs> the modern day American psyche cannot exist without the normalcy of African oppression. Because without the normalcy of African oppression, then Apple gotta give the Congo their money back. And America gotta give Haiti their money back. And America gotta give Black America their money back. That's why many of us don't wanna have these conversations in truth and honesty because we all understand, we collectively understand what the foundation of this country is built upon. There's a reason why you can't get a certain reaction out of people when you talk about the genocides going on in Africa because Africans, black people, are supposed to live in a perpetual state of suffering. Your existence is fighting. Your existence is suffering and we need to get rid of that rhetoric. We are the only community that believes that progress does not happen without suffering. We are the only community that believes that a step forward, you gotta get stabbed in the back. We do not have to suffer to move forward. A lot of the changes that we need to make to improve our livelihood will make our lives easier. And that's why a lot of us are paralyzed by change because we're under the underlying assumption that after this, our lives will be harder. But in reality, all of our lives will be easier. All of our lives will have more purpose and all of our lives will be better. We are constantly being sold this movie narrative of revolution. This infinity war battleground. What the? <gasps> revolution doesn't always look like Thanos versus the Avengers. Revolution doesn't always look like Somebody on top of a horse yelling, the British are coming with a spear. Sometimes progress looks like opening up a book. 
Sometimes progress looks like taking your car details off Amazon and giving your hard-earned money to the people in your community who are more interested in giving that money back to you than Amazon ever will be. You don't have to suffer to change your life. You don't have to walk through burning coals in the door of the fire to change your life. Sometimes you could just change your life. <laughs> Peace out. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so I want you guys to let me know what you think of this one. All three of these people, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and Donald J. Trump all got arrested by Democrats. I wonder what you guys think about this. Let me know down in the comments. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so I want you guys to let me know what you think. Honey, it's like oil and water that doesn't even mix. First of all, you cannot put Donald Trump in the category of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. Two different, two different type of elements. They were doing it for a civil rights movement. He was doing it for his own movement. And I'm referring to Donald Trump. For all y'all that wants to support Trump, to me, you have to come up with some valid, relevant point. Okay? Because some of the points that you guys are bringing up is not relevant at all. To me, this is a slap to an industry. You're putting more wound into the situation. Reverend Martin Luther King was a well-educated man, and he was a man that had a lot of integrity. He wasn't perfect, but he stood up for the rights of blacks, okay? And, you know, no matter what the controversy behind the scenes with Rosa Parks, she stood up because she didn't want to sit down and no, or go and get up out of no seat, okay? And that's how she got in her situation. Even if Democrat parties at that time was the same type of people that wanted to continue on slavery. And Democrat party at that time even said that after slavery to kick the people them out and put them back, bring them back to where they belong. And come to find out they belong right here in America. Because they ended up becoming natives in America. Because some of them were still born as slaves. But at the end of the day, it don't matter. Democrat and Republican are both the same, okay? They're equal partners, even the liberals, all right? Our main concern is Trump is don't even fit in the equation of those two, okay? If you wanna, if you wanna put Madoff and even, not even, I wouldn't even put John, um, if you wanna put Madoff and if you wanna put that um, young man who was doing the Bitcoin's um, currency scandal, then that can fit the category, but not those two. Okay, it's like oil and water. It does not mix. It doesn't sum up the situation. So this is all I got from this. And now before I get into the whole thing, I'm going to start with the last video. That, is, that woman is Hispanic, right? So, and the, uh, the truth is that I don't know why they wake up every day and all they want to do is look for a way to link black people to Donald Trump because they feel like, I don't know why they do that, but this is something that they've been doing a whole lot. You can imagine the insult, I mean, thinking that uh, 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 Martin Luther King, Donald Trump, and who other person, I think Rose Park or something, had something in common. And I am asking, what do they have in common? And I really love what the last sister, Sister Pearl, what she said. If you are looking for somebody to lay to Donald Trump, probably the person that, yeah. So let's get into the main video. Now let's talk about this. It's really amazing how these people have really been, I don't know how, but I love it sometimes when they say some certain things and uh someone opens up about the whole thing because this news is not something probably people were supposed to know or we probably were not supposed to know it or they probably talked about this in secret and this person actually came out here to grant an interview and say and say straight up what they told them to do when there is protest and this protest we are talking about or not even protest for um, colored people these are the protests where they ask them to pew pew if it's people that look like me because they know how important their own lives matter. So they would never, ever want to do something like that to themselves and all that. And that tells you, uh, and it's also 
draw a uh, Trump campaign, whoever coalition that talked about that said that. And the truth is that they really have been doing this for a longer time. I don't think this is new, right? This is not new. This is something they've been doing. Because you all can also see some of the sudden things happening to people that look like me, the gun violence and how it affects my own community, people that look like me, right? And then when you look at it, you also can see the maggots, the people that support this man so bad, or people that also look like me, Donald Byron, or I think that is his name. What's this person's name? Um... Is it Jim or I can't remember that man, man's name. I mean, the black man that I'm oh, is it black. Yeah, I can't remember. But if I remember his name, I, I will absolutely say. So all of them that are supporting Donald Trump and they are that are rooting for him so bad can also see some of this, some certain things that they have been doing and still look for a way to cover it up. Like I keep saying, you cannot be a black person and you are in the midst of where they are discussing or where you know that something bad is going to happen to people like that look like you or happen in your own community and you keep quiet, you are not saying anything. Why? Because you are so much after the check that you are going to get. So for that reason, they do not care about you. All they care about is the check. See, I do not have any problem if we have different political view, right? But the, uh, the fact that I, if we cannot be able to, if we cannot sit down as people with different uh, political view and talk about some certain things, then it means that uh, nothing can be done, you know? So this is the problem black people are facing. And they will still see all this. They will see all the things. They will hear all this and still support them. This is, look at the people that work closely with him, what they said, what they told the military to do. When they come across, people them, right? When they are protesting. And this is also the same person that is all over everywhere, agitating to be in black community. Like he really wants himself so bad in anything that got to do with black community. That's why they also rented, they rented a hall in Detroit and said it's black church. And the black church, there was nothing more than, it was just five black persons. The rest are all white. So how is it a black church? Because I am really trying to understand how all these are happening. I mean, he really wants to be in black space so bad. This is also an eye opener. So people will also see what it's going, what it's happening. Because sometimes you never can tell whom you are like. You know, it's, now, one thing about supporting evil is that uh, one day, I mean, when you are supporting evil, you don't even know who... Because that evil you are supporting might wake up one day and hurt you. Because all this they are saying, I mean, like, you know, how they planned it. When you all go out or they are protesting, people them. You never can tell if the person they will hurt will be you. But one thing is that I know that most of them do not send their families out, especially when there are some certain things, protests and all that. They hide their own because they know the evil that they already have planned out and the evils that they've been doing. So them also are kind of very scared because they do not also want to lose their own family. But they, they, one thing that they know so much ahead of what is that they know when something is going to strike. So they do know most times they, they are not going to be there. But the one thing I know is that our ancestors will judge them very harshly. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.